one of the most rugged gifts of God from Africa to the world is called Apostle Emmanuel Nuhukure. Positioned in southern Kaduna, the seat in, in the north, the seat of religious intolerance for decades, over 30, and has left there to impact the whole world. We have shared a very, very close relationship and I've been in their meetings frequently. And then um, when this construction was on, we came in here together, went round, looked at various places, prophesied, and we're excited to be here. Would you like to come, sir, and say a word of greeting to the people? Give the Lord a big clap of hand for Apostle Emmanuel Nuhukure. Later on, he will be making declarations over the nation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can you lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. I sat down there while the worship was going on. And I saw God open six centers across the world different centers and he called them cities of refuge for the nations and all of these places different continents gathered at different points and he was there spreading the fire all over the place and I heard the Lord say 10 years, within 10 years, these centers shall form. Then will the ministry begin. So the ministry has not begun. Uh, I told them already. <laughs> On behalf of the throne room ministries, and the global watchmen across the nations of the earth, some of which are watching us today. We want to congratulate the senior pastor and his beautiful, prophetic, amiable wife. You see, they call me prophet, but I found a prophetess can, that can see further away. Anyone who can keep this head can keep many nations together. Let's put our hands together for our mother of the house. You know, I was just thinking about you this morning and praying for you and asking for more grace. It takes more than the extraordinary to keep this powerhouse. Did you hear what I just said? And you are that extraordinary. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. On behalf of the church of God in the whole nations of the earth, and on behalf of the prophetic in Nigeria, I want to thank God for the day the Lord called you out and dropped you from this nation to reach the nations of the world. I want to thank God for 25 years. Actually, 25 years is when priesthood actually begins you are permitted to begin to prophesy on the altar anyhow it's at 25 and that is why it took 30 years for jesus to be made ready for ministry this 25 years is a learner's permit it's now the real thing will start that's what we said i say it is now the real thing will start so those of you who are holding his hands and walking with him. After this meeting, you need to go for a fresh consecration because the work is just beginning. If you thought it was becoming large or too large, you have not seen anything yet. So you need to go and read it. And I speak by the spirit. I'm not known with a flattering tongue. Everybody knows me in this nation. I am not known with a flattering tongue. 
I don't know how to flatter people. I don't even know how to congratulate people. If you ask me to speak, I can only speak the prophetic. But listen, every one of you in this ministry, particularly leaders, you need to go for your personal retreat because the field is still wide, wider than what you have treaded. And greater things are about to happen. We rejoice with you and thank you very much for this privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, 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 way We make a miracle, promise me, fight in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle, promise me, fight in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. God is who you are. You are God, we crack your face, but that's who you are. God is who you are. Can you come to me here, please, sir? Listen. God told me that this is a gateway to this nation to the whole nation this is a gateway to the whole nation this is the only mega church in the capital that is sited at the airport listen in case you don't know the spiritual significance it is deliberate to control the entry point to the seat of power and government in this nation. And tonight, God, or this morning, how many of you remember Job 38, verses 12 and 13? Have you commanded the morning since thy days so that the whole of creation and the earth might know its level. That's right. Everybody will take his position. That's right. So that from today, the morning and the night will begin to lay hold on every human being that has breath and make them do the will of God. This morning, whatsoever has not done the will of God in your life, Tapping on this altar. That's right. We take authority over that thing. We take them captive to begin to do the will of God in your life. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you wave to the Lord and shout amen? amen. God said this morning, we are going to raise seven shouts. That's right. That's right. As it was in Jericho. That's right. 
The end of Nigeria travail, Nigeria's travail has come. That's right. I didn't hear somebody. Did you say, hear hey, that? Man. The end of Nigeria's travail has come. A major prophet from the US sent me a letter this morning that in these prayer items, I should give you specific prayer items for Nigeria. And I replied back, just begin to give thanks. I have no prayer item for you. Because I knew from this gate, on this altar, That's right. this vigil will settle the matters of this nation. Amen! I didn't hear somebody say, Amen! I didn't hear somebody say, Amen! Nigeria must need to break off now to join the committee of nations that will bring back the Messiah. Listen, forgive me. I know the nations of the earth are watching. But according to scripture, in Isaiah chapter 11, two major leaders the whole church will bring back the Messiah. But two major leaders, houses, will lead to pave the way in the bringing back of the Messiah. Number one is the house of Ephraim. Number two is Judah. Now you will say, how does that affect me? And how does that affect Nigeria? Listen. The Bible says as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. Who led Israel into Canaan? Can you shout that name? Joshua! How many of you know that Joshua was the head of the house of Ephraim? How many of you know that Ephraim is from the loins of Africa. No. We have Bible scholars, PhD degree holders. Peter Wagner was my mentor. He was my international spiritual father. That the Adeboe was the one who bettered me. Listen to me. I speak for words that are deep spiritually and physically. Listen to me. That demon has not been born that will not allow you or Nigeria to fulfill her destiny. That's right. If you believe that this morning, say amen. Before the prophet and the apostle of God comes to finally release us to the source To the river port of our blessings. Today we are going to enter into an oath with God. To enter our houses before the proclamation comes. And sit there waiting for the word of his servant. That at every word today. Something will shift in your life for eternity. I didn't hear somebody say amen. No, you don't understand. We are in the days of the fulfillment of prophecy. And when you walk with deep revelation, deep things happen to you. It means that the blood and offsprings of Joshua, the brothers of Joshua, the lineage of Joshua, and we are part of that lineage, if you don't know, and Judah, where the Messiah comes from, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that carries the blood of the Messiah, are going to play central roles in bringing back the king. And when you talk about Africa, the largest singular nation in Africa in population, out of every four black men or black men, is one Nigerian in the whole world. It means Nigeria will be at the top 
along with Ju Judah, along with Israel, in fulfilling prophecy. Let me tell you something. Because we are going to raise a shout and my work is over. If you believe it, you will raise a shout. If you don't believe it, shut your mouth up. When it begins to happen, you will come under our cover. As we begin to see, look, we just finished our 30 years anniversary and he was a key minister along with Dadia Deboe. Listen, because this is very important. Listen, because this is very important. You know, I was shivering when he had to shift from the tradition tonight to just talk about prosperity, wealth, and he's concluding with it tonight. I was shivering. Because the key thing the Lord told us, one of the main things the Lord told us in that conference, is that he's going to raise 12 pillars. Like the 12 disciples of men with stupendous wealth. Stupendous. Who ruled the nations of the earth and paved the way for the coming of the Messiah. Men with uncommon wealth. Men who control continents and governments by the anointing of their pockets. By two witnesses, a word is established. That's right. God has brought me from the bush as a prophet to stand in this capital, in this holy place, to declare that this day is this prophecy fulfilled in your That's lives. Right. To declare this morning that you are the fulfillment of prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, today, I give a notice to every law of the spirit that will not allow you enter into your place. Today, let them catch fire. fire. Somebody shall fire. fire. No, no, no. You don't understand yet. Can I tell you something else? Sir, you had left. No, before you came, we had started. How many of you know this is the Shemitah year in Israel? It's a Shemitah year. A Shemitah year is a Sabbath year when God gives the land rest in order to renew it or renews the covenant of the land for the upliftment of man and the nations of the earth. It's a Sabbath year when God enters into a new covenant with the land to change the destiny of man. Today, I curse anything after this word this morning that will not allow you to prosper. Let them be cursed in the heavens. Let them be cursed in the earth. Let them be cursed among our ancestors. In the name of Jesus. That means this is a year when that word that was spoken to Pharaoh is going to be repeated. Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. Whether they are worth it or not, they are my people. Let them go. I have an appointment with them. God has an appointment with you. Your situation must let you go. I say God has an appointment with you. Your situation must let you go. Every condemnation must let you go. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Listen. 
the key scripture and then we begin to raise the shout and prophesy the key scripture for the Shemitah year which is the scripture for this nation is Revelation 12 16 put it on the screen everywhere you enter from today the earth will help you Shall we all read? If you believe the word of the Lord, let's read the word of the Lord today. Everybody open your mouth and read. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the floor which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Ah! From now, everywhere you enter, ah! May the dragon be swallowed up. Amen. Therefore, every covenant, whether ancient or present, that stands against you to defy the word of the Lord from this altar, in the name of Jesus, let the earth open up and swallow that covenant. Let the earth destroy the yoke upon your head. Let the earth destroy the yoke upon the nation. Are you ready for the covenant that goes with the shofar? Are you ready for the shout? Listen. You are simply going to make a very simple prayer and I will sit down. You are going to tell the Lord, Lord, I enter into an oath with you. I enter into it specific definite covenant with you and i permit you by that covenant to open the gates and the history of nigeria this morning this morning a thousand years is like one day unto the lord and a day is like a thousand years this morning reverse the power of the Assyrian army and put Nigeria back in its place that is what Isaiah 11 tells you it talks about 11 from verse 16 to the end talks about in that day hmm. the Bible says there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people who shall be left from Assyria as it was in Israel in the day that he came out of the land of Egypt. If you go a few verse, it talks about the prophecies of that day. Listen. Listen because this is very important. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 10. Write all those scriptures. You will need them later because I'm not preaching tonight. I was just going to make a sound on the nation. Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 10 to 15. But verse 10 says, or go back to verse 9. What does it say? Verse 9 says, Thy bow, the bow of the Lord, the bow of the Lord, was made quite naked. According to what? The odds of the tribes even thy word. Can you lift up your hand? Can you say, Heavenly Father, this morning, if Nigeria is in prophecy, we enter into a covenant and an oath with you and invite you to step into the deep of Nigeria and unlock it to fulfill prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we invite you to unlock the bowels, the foundations, the beginnings of this nation and fulfill its prophecy for the end, starting from this morning. In the name of Jesus, can you pray the second prayer and say, My Heavenly Father, I enter into an oath with you. To enter into my father's house. Whatever secrets that bettered my life. That has shaped the destiny of my family. 
Tonight, unlock their mysteries and release me to the fulfillment of the prophecy of this day. In the name of Jesus. Can you open your mouth and pray those two prayers very quickly in one minute? Open your mouth. You see, if you don't let God in by covenant, it's by covenant Israel was established. You can, your life can never be fulfilled by covenant. By covenant. By covenant. My life has been kept in the wilderness by covenant. Alive. That is why many of the songs that were sung here touch a chord in my soul. I am the testament of those songs. The testimony of those songs. I live in the bush. I visit the cities. And everybody shout, Oh God, arise! And let your judgment sit in my house. And let it begin to speak now. By the oath of the covenant of my mouth. Oh God arise. Let your judgment sit in Abuja. And begin to speak to the life of Nigeria. In the name of Jesus. We will take the shout now. Listen, while the worship was going on, I was standing there. I saw two angels, one from the north and one from the south. And I saw them lift away their veil over Nigeria. And I said, Lord, what is happening here? He said, two woes are passed. You did not know when the first two angels walked, but you will know when the last two operate. You will for forgive me, sir. Do I have your permission? Just, I'm not extending the meeting. I'm not going to preach. I'm not preaching either. But I, I know I'm asking for your permission. Because... There are many sensitive people in this altar. I will just say it like this and leave it there. And throw it and leave it there. The plane crash that took place in Nigeria that had to do with the military, the army chief of staff, had been preordained. I will stop there. The first angel has spoken. The second, the second, God had told us from the presidency somebody was going to leave at the beginning of the coronavirus. My people are here, they will tell you. Those were the works of gatekeepers over Nigeria. To revisit the foundations and start a healing that cannot be hindered. I won't say more than that. But two more, one from the north, one from the south. Keepers of the gate, angels are going to unlock their mysteries and for your sake heads are going to roll for your prosperity heads are going to roll for your sake a new nigeria will be born in the name of jesus somebody shout somebody shout Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Now, hold it there. The shuffers are going to go seven times. Releasing the angels of the four winds to mix with us today and carry the winds of the decrees of this meeting and make it blow across the globe, lifting up the pillars that must rise, the new pillars that will hold the foundations of this earth at the coming of the Messiah. 
lifting men out of the shadows and releasing them to the place of your de destiny. Today, wherever your house is placed, that wind is going to blow in your house. Wherever you are standing, let the yoke begin to break now. In the name of Jesus. They are going to sound that shofar. Calling forth the angels of the four winds. You remember Revelation chapter 7, verse 1? Going to call forth the angels because the four winds are going to be involved. They are already at work. In the reconstitution of the earth. And the preparations that Jesus, the Messiah, according to Acts chapter 3, verse 20, must bring to pass. The Bible says he went, but it is coming back to do restorative work. He shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. And he shall bring about restitution. And shall bring about the restoration of all things. God is coming back to restore us as a church. Isaiah chapter 4 says he's going to make his branch beautiful for the, for the groom that is coming. Listen, get ready. Every word tonight, every proclamation with a thunderous shout, you must receive your word. Because God is setting men as statues upon the earth. An army is being born. Like he said, these are just workers. Every one of you is a worker here. The church is just about to begin. There is an army that is being better. And the revival is going to be so fast. It's going to cut across everywhere. Shofars, are we ready? Father, open the heavens now and glorify your word that from now, this gate will open and cover the nations of the earth. This gate that, this, that is this altar, by the vows and the covenants that have come out here, we rule this nation. That from now, according to your word, within the next three years, the foundations will have been completed. Therefore today, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Shuffles begin to sound.